the first two examples that we've encountered covered univariate transformations. That is, we had a discrete random variable x in the first case, and we wanted the distribution of y equals x squared. In the second example, we had a continuous random variable x, and we wanted the distribution of y equals the square root of x. Well, this particular example covers the bivariate case. Let x1 be geometric p1 and x2 be geometric p2. Independent random variables with supports beginning at 0, and that's why the lowercase g was used here and here. Find the distribution of y equals the minimum of x1 and x2. Now to review back from chapter 4, the probability mass function of a geometric random variable x is f sub x of x is p times 1 minus p raised to the x power for x equals 0, 1, 2, etc. And that's for a parameter p between 0 and 1. The associated cumulative distribution function at its mass values is capital Fx of x is 1 minus 1 minus p to the x plus 1. So once again, I am going to use the steps numbered from the original algorithm. And so here is step 1. Step 1 is determine the support of x, which is denoted by script A. So script A, in this case, will be the set of all values x1, x2, such that, well in this case x1 is geometric, it runs from 0 to infinity. x2 is also geometric, running from 0 to infinity, so you simply write that. x1, 0, 1, 2, etc. and x2 is also 0, 1, 2, etc. So that ends step one. Step two is to determine the um, distribution of x1 and x2. That's what's going to go on next, slightly different than in the previous case. So what is the joint distribution of x1 and x2? Well, in this particular case, because they are assumed to be independent random variables, that tells us the joint will be the product of the marginals. So this will be fx1 of x1 multiplied by fx2 of x2. And because the probability mass function of a geometric random variable looks like this, we know that this will be p1 times 1 minus p1 to the x power, x1 power. And the probability mass function of x2 will be p2 times 1 minus p2 raised to the x2 power. If you go back up and look at the problem, you'll notice that even though these are independent, they're not identically distributed. In other words, the x1 random variable has its own p1 value, which might be different from the p2 value for x2. And this is for x1 and x2 that are an element of the support that was given in step 1. Step 3 in the algorithm is to determine the support of y is equal to g of x. Now in this particular case, it isn't just y equals g of x, it's y equals g of x1 and x2. And in this case, that function g is one that looks a little bit different than the previous ones. It is the minimum of x1 and x2. So if x1 and x2 are both between 0 and infinity and we take their minimum, then script B, and these are the values that y can take on, will be the set of all y such that 
the minimum of something between zero and infinity and another thing between zero and infinity, well, that minimum will also go zero to infinity. So you get this as the support of the random variable y. So that com completes the first three steps. And now we're off to the fourth step. And the fourth step is write the cumulative distribution function of y in the usual fashion. So this is one of the nice things about the CDF technique. It always has this same step four. I'm going to write a little bit small because I know this is going to be crowded. F sub y of y is the probability that the random variable y is less than or equal to little y. Well, what is y in this particular case? y is the minimum of the random variables x1 and x2. So that particular probability statement, if we draw a, a uh, axis over here and we put our value y, which is the argument here in the CDF here, what is the meaning when we say the minimum of y is less than or equal, or the minimum of x1 and x2 is less than or equal to y? Well, if the minimum falls here, we can't tell about the larger value which side of y it's on. So let's try replacing this by its complement, which is 1 minus the probability that the minimum of x and y, I'm sorry, the minimum of x1 and x2, is greater than y. Now we do have to be careful in this case between our less than or equal to and our greater than because these are discrete random variables and that matters. So if I were to tell you that the, the smaller of x and 1 and x2 is greater than y, you could conclude that both of them are greater than y. So now we can break this out and get rid of the minimum by saying this is the probability that x1 is greater than y and x2 is greater than y. Now we're starting to move a little bit because we've eliminated the minimum. This particular probability statement, because x1 and x2 are independent, this can be written as the probability that x1 is greater than y multiplied by the probability x2 is greater than y. Well, on the previous slide, we don't have greater thans, we have a less than or equal to for the uh, cumulative distribution function. So I'll go ahead and rewrite this as this first piece is the same as 1 minus the probability that x1 is less than or equal to y. And this second piece here is 1 minus the probability that x2 is less than or equal to y. Notice I've been careful with my greater than and less than or equal to because these are discrete random variables. Well, this quantity that is right here, that is the CDF of x1. So I'm going to write this as 1 minus the CDF of x1 evaluated at y. And this right here is the CDF of x2 evaluated at y. 1 minus f x2 of y. And this is where we're using the CDF technique kicking in. So now when we go to the previous slide, in fact, I'll, I'll, go, uh, I'll go back there for just a second. On the previous slide, we had the cumulative distribution function written out in this fashion right here. So because of that, we know that the uh, CDF for the um, geometric distribution, we will get 1 minus P1, that whole thing raised to the Y plus 1 power. And for this quantity right here, we get 1 minus P2, ones cancel there, raised to the 
y plus 1 power. And since you have the uh, same exponent here, this can be written as 1 minus 1 minus p1 times 1 minus p2 raised to the y plus 1 power, and that's for y equals 0, 1, 2, etc. So, a conclusion here, if you stare at that expression right there, you will notice here that y is geometric, and that's geometric with a small g, and the geometric parameter in this particular case is 1 minus 1 minus p1 times 1 minus p2. Now, if you want to confirm that in Apple, this first statement right here says that p1 must lie between 0 and 1. This statement right here says p2 must lie between 0 and 1. And this statement right here defines the distribution of x1 using the geometric distribution, which is uh, parametrized from 0. You, in this particular case, do not use just geometric RV because that one happens to be parametrized from 1. Here is that same definition for x2, but this time with p2 as a parameter. When you say y is equal to the minimum of x1 and x2, you will return, although it's not simplified, this same cumulative distribution function that we got right up here, and that will confirm that the minimum of two independent geometric random variables is geometric with this particular parameter.